So tier lists are the hot thing to do on YouTube right now. You guys saw that I did my tier list ranking MLB teams a couple weeks ago. You guys loved it. It got a ton of views, a lot of conversation going in the comment section below. And I saw a good friend of mine, fellow YouTuber who makes baseball content, The Ant Ortiz. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Go over there and support him. He's a beast, good friend. But he did a video doing starting shortstops tier list. And I was like, hmm. That's a good idea. I'm gonna do it. So since he gave me the good idea, I'm kind of like copying him a little bit. Go show him some love, support his channel. Like I said, link in the description. What we're gonna be doing is ranking the shortstops in Major League Baseball from S tier, which is elite, all the way down to F, which of course, like in school, you don't wanna be getting Fs, that's failure. So we got a tier list of the MLB starting shortstops. I'm gonna go ahead and rank them, like I said, from S to F. For my ratings, it's gonna be simple as this. 2019 is gonna be super important. I'm also gonna have some previous years in the past going around in my head, but just know it's gonna be what I feel about them right now. I don't care how good they were in 2016. They could be an S tier in 2016. They might be an F this year. So that's how we're rocking and rolling with this. This is gonna be the last video with this setup. Your boy is moving out of his apartment. It's time to start a new chapter. College is over, I'm graduating. So this is gonna be one of the last videos you see here as always if you guys do enjoy these videos And you want to see more of this kind of content make sure to leave a like that's the best way to show your support subscribe If you're new and you enjoy the content if you love baseball This is the place to be hit that sub button. Let me know in the comment section below I'm sure you're gonna have opinions. Let me know what I got wrong what you disagree with what you agree with I love the conversation. So let's keep it going in the comment section And remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at draft Nick mark links in the description to both of those It's a great way for us to interact about baseball So we might as well get started on this tier list. I think we've been talking for long enough we're starting off with Tim Anderson of the Chicago White Sox, having a fantastic year this year. Previous years, he's been okay. Uh, it's kind of interesting because he's probably playing like an A-tier level guy, but I am going to take into account that he has had some previous years of not being great, so I think B right now is probably a good spot for him. I'm a believer in Tim Anderson. He's trying to make baseball fun again, but I also have to keep it realistic. He's just not the best of the best yet, but I think he's still really good. This next guy, I am well aware I left him off my top 50 list because I just completely forgot. His name skipped my brain, but Xander Bogarts of the Boston Red Sox is one of my favorite players. I think he's really underrated in the game. He's going to go in A tier for me. I know I forgot him for my top 50. Go ahead, roast me for that. I also forgot Lorenzo Cain, but he's definitely a top 50 player in baseball. I think he lands in the A tier for shortstops. I don't think he's one of the best, but I think at A tier, that's kind of perfect for him. Cole Tucker. Don't know a whole lot about him. He's played a few games with the Pirates. He's obviously a young prospect. I'm going to drop him in the C tier right now because he's obviously shown a little bit of talent, but I haven't seen enough of him just yet to really give a definitive answer. And he's played what, like 15, 20 games at most. So for me to put him in A, B, S would be a little bit crazy, but it'd also be crazy for me to call him a D or an F. So I think C right now is gonna be the spot for him. Fernando Tatis Jr. Now you're gonna argue we've only seen 20, 30 games of him, but I've seen a lot more of Fernando Tatis Jr. I watch a lot more Padres games than I do with the Pirates. And I think Fernando Tatis is gonna be that B level. He plays a fantastic shortstop. He's great defensively, has great range. He can run the bases. He can hit for some power. I'm a huge Tatis fan. I think he's in the B tier. Next up on the list is Tampa Bay Rays shortstop Willie Adamez. Kind of disappointing. He was kind of, I don't want to say a highly touted prospect, but he was someone they were talking a lot about. He really doesn't swing the bat well. Defensively, you know, he's just like everybody else. He's not making Anderson Simmons type plays. So I'm going to drop Willie Adamez in the D. I'm sorry, Rays fans. It's just 236. He's, he's just not cutting it for me just yet. Doesn't mean he can't get better. But right now, D tier. Dansby Swanson of the Atlanta Braves. He is having a better season, but he has cooled off a little bit. His numbers have kind of come back down to earth. He's hitting around 260. I'm going to put Dansby in the C tier. The reason being, we've seen some of his years in the past. We know he's super talented. He was a top prospect at one point, number one overall pick. He has all the talent in the world, but he still hasn't just put it together yet. While he is playing better in 2019, that's why he gets into C for me. I probably would have had him in D or F in previous years. He plays pretty good defense at short, but he's just not the kind of player we were expecting for the Braves. So I'm going to drop him in C right now. Paul DeYoung. This guy's going off. And you know what? People are going to get mad at me because I'm dropping this man in A tier, but I'm telling you why. Here, just, just look at him. Look at his numbers. Watch him play the game. The dude swings the bat as one of the best shortstops in the game. He's one of the best hitting guys at shortstop position in all of baseball. Now, I'm not saying he's Francisco Lindor level, but when you get to that second tier of guys, he's right there as one of the best hitters. And he's fantastic defensively. Look up his defensive numbers. Watch him play shortstop. He's extremely underrated. I don't think enough people are talking about him. Paul DeYoung's gonna be an A tier for me. That's gonna piss some people off, but I stand by it. Next up on this list, Brandon Crawford. I really wanna put him in D. I really do. But he's probably playing like a D or F player this year. Last year, he hit about 250. He's a great fielder, as we know. I'm going to drop him in C tier because I think right now he's pretty much just your average shortstop. I don't think he's going to make your team better. I don't think he's going to make your team worse. But if he continues to be a 200 hitter, he's going to find his way into D or F because at that point, he's pretty much a defensive shortstop because he is still good in the field. He just can't swing the bat anymore. Freddie Galvis, interesting player. He's on the field for a ton of games. He's going to play good defense at short. He hits for some pop. 
but that's kind of it. Freddie Galvis is going to go into that C tier for me, similar to Brandon Crawford. You know, you're just not getting a whole lot out of him offensively. Now, he has played a little bit better this year for the Blue Jays. He has been decent, but he's not in that B tier. He's not someone that you go out and you go, I need to get Freddie Galvis. He's going to make my team better. Francisco Lindor, let's just drag him right up to S tier. That's the best shortstop in the game. Francisco Lindor is definitely S tier. He's going to hit you 30 plus home runs. He plays gold glove defense. He runs the bases, drives and runs walks he does it all francisco lindor is a stud of a player s tier it's just i don't think i even need to explain it it's just very obvious all right next up on our list we got richie martin orioles shortstop he's going in f tier the dude can't hit a lick he's an average shortstop at, at his absolute best i'm sorry richie martin if you're watching this i don't want to rip on you but you're an f tier he's just not a good player orlando arcia of the brewers again another one of these guys who's going to find himself in that middle of the line that c tier he had some good seasons in the past last year not necessarily the best at the plate He's hitting about 250 this year, so I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's, again, run of the mill, right there at average. He's pretty good with the glove at short. I think he has the potential to move up, obviously. I think this guy's got a lot of talent, but just right now in his career, I think he's right at C. Trey Turner. I'm going to drop Trey Turner in the A tier. I'm a big fan of Trey Turner. As a Mets fan, I get to watch the Nationals play the Mets, what, 20 plus times a year. And then I also watch Trey Turner through some other stuff because I really like the way he plays the game. He's super fast on the bases. He's a menace when he gets on first base. It pretty much turns into a double or triple. He can hit the ball with some pop. He has some power. He splits the gap. He plays a great shortstop. I think he can also play center field. He's very versatile. I'm a big fan of Trey Turner. I think he's one of the most important players on the Nationals. I think he's got to be an A tier. He's really good if anything underrated i don't think enough people realize how good he is Corey seager now if you asked me a couple years ago this guy's going to be in borderline s and a tier right now i'm going to drop Corey seager in the b tier he's off to a bit of a rough start since coming back from tommy john surgery with the dodgers this year i think he's obviously still extremely talented and can easily find his way back into a or s by the end of the year but as of right now coming off that surgery coming off a big injury he's kind of playing like a b tier kind of player so that's where he's gonna fall oh my boy carlos correa i love watching this guy play he's one of my favorites in the game i got a correa jersey he's going in the a tier without a doubt he's back boys he is back he was battling injuries last year his numbers weren't great but he's fine Finally healthy he's hitting for some power hitting for average playing great defense at short showing that cannon of an arm i love watching carlos correa play he's easily one of my favorite players in the game definitely an a tier shortstop marcus simeon is actually one of the better fielding shortstops in the game so if he wasn't that you'd probably see him in the c although he's starting to hit this year so i'm actually gonna drop marcus simeon in the b tier he's really good defensively at shortstop he has some pop in his bat and he's actually hitting pretty well so while he may not be again i think he's probably towards the bottom of b top of c but i'm gonna drop him in b tier here because he is having a career season thus far and i think simeon's a pretty solid player ahmed rosario this is a player that i just uh, like he's really just someone that i want to see do well obviously as a mets fan but i'm dropping him in c tier his fielding has been really shaky. His hitting has improved this year. He's definitely a better hitter, but he's still not the guy that we were once promised. He was a number one prospect in our system. All we heard about was how he's going to take over shortstop. We're finally going to get our guy. And just defensively, it seems like he doesn't get to many balls. He makes a lot of errors. So defensively, he's, he's very shaky. He's starting to hit a little bit, but I think C tier right now because he is hitting. It's just, I can't put him in D. He's not hitting 150, you know? Nick Ahmed for the Arizona Dimebacks. I'm also going to drop him in C. I get, I think you get the feeling that there's going to be a lot of C shortstop because there really is a bunch of average. There's a lot of great, and there's not a lot of bad shortstops. Nick Ahmed, fantastic in the field as one of Gold Glove, as we know. Not much of a hitter at the plate. It's like a 250 hitter kind of at his absolute peak. He's not going to hit for a lot of power, but he's there to get ground ball outs, to be that kind of, that, that Gold Glove in the middle of the infield. So for those reasons, I got to put him in C. He's kind of like that Brandon Crawford type. At Alberto Mondesi, definitely showing that he has a lot of talent this dude is super fast he's got some pop in his bat he plays pretty good shortstop we drop him in the b tier here because he's not yet there at the a i still need to see some more of him but from what we have seen thus far he looks to be a solid young player a good guy that the royals got to help build up that team again in that young farm system that young team so i think Alberto mondesi and b is a really good spot for him for gene segura i'm gonna put him in the b but he's a very close to a i'm gonna put him i'm gonna put him ahead of tim anderson and the reason being is this He's hit 300 in the past. He, all the dude does is hit. He hits singles, doubles, triples, whatever you need. He's going to smack the ball around the field. That's something I love in my players. I love a bat player who has a high batting average. Defensively, you know, he's not Andrelton Simmons, but he's also not someone who has no hands at shortstop. So he's pretty decent defensively. And I think he's a guy who can creep into A tier. It's just right now, he pretty much just offers batting average. You do want to see him have a little bit of a better eye, get on base a little bit, or at least have a little bit more pop in his bat. But I think Gene Segura is a very good player, probably underrated by most. He's going to drop into the B tier for me. Tiger shortstop, Jordy Mercer is going to be a D tier for me. He's just kind of like your, he's, if you have him as a bench bat, I think you like him as a bench bat, as a utility guy, kind of all over the place. But as your starting shortstop, 
it just doesn't make you very excited. He doesn't hit very well. He's hitting 200 this year. Fielding wise, he's just like everyone else. He's out there. He's not bad, but he's not good. He gets in the D tier for me. Just Jordy Mercer is not a player that excites me one bit. Another player that doesn't excite me, Miguel Rojas. He's going to get dropped into the D as well. The Miami Marlins are a joke of a franchise. That team is horrendous. When he plays against the Mets, he's absolutely dominant against us. He destroys us. But against the rest of the competition, Miguel Rojas is just, he's just average. Like, honestly, at best, he's a C tier, but he's kind of not even really a shortstop. He plays third, second, first. He's all over the place. So he gets in D tier for me. Miguel Rojas is just not very special. For Tim Beckham of the Seattle Mariners, I'm going to drop him in C tier. He started the year off super hot, hitting home runs out in Japan, with a little bit of bat flips, a little bit of flair, but he's cooled off quite a bit. He's like a 250 hitter, really, with the Seattle Mariners. His home run, his powers have come back down to earth. He's an average player. C tier is the right spot for him. Jose Iglesias, another one of these players who is fantastic with the glove. Fielding wise, there may not be a player in Major League Baseball who has smoother hands up the middle. Jose Iglesias with the glove is disgusting. Hitting wise, you're kind of happy with him if he hits like 250, 260. I know he's got a decent bat, but he's not creeping his way up to B anytime soon. He's really kind of just your most average shortstop there is in baseball. Really good defensively, swings the bat okay. Jose Iglesias, C tier. Jorge Polanco. Definitely having a good year. Of course, he got suspended for steroids last year, but he has come back strong this year. He's swinging the bat well. He's playing a good shortstop for the Twins. One of the reasons why they've been so successful is because of him and his strong bat thus far. So I think he's going to be a B-tier player, probably towards a little bit of the bottom because we haven't seen enough of him, in my opinion, just yet. But from what we have seen, he looks like he's a solid ball player, B-tier for him. Javi Baez. Javi Baez is going to go into the elite tier for me. This is someone who I will admit I doubted last year. I thought, nah, he's not going to do this for a full season, but he did. And he's continued to be hot in 2019 for the Chicago Cubs. He's fantastic up the middle. He's got all the flair. He's got the pizzazz. He's got the bat flips. He's got power. He does it all except really walk. But I think Javi Baez is an elite shortstop in this game. One of the best there is in the major leagues. Therefore, he's got to be an S tier. He's just a little bit above everyone else. DD Gregorius, New York Yankees. He hasn't played a game this year, but I'm going to drop him in B tier. DD is a very solid player. Don't get me wrong. Now, a lot of people are upset I didn't have him in my top 10 shortstop list in 2019. The reason being that he was hurt. He's probably not going to play very much in 2019. So how could he be a top 10 in that year if he's not going to play for about half the season? He's perfect for Yankee Stadium. He pulls the ball down the line, all 215 feet, gets it over the fence. He'll hit 20 home runs. He's very solid up the middle defensively. He gets a little bit pull happy, that's for sure. And I don't think he's going to be as good of a player as if he didn't play in Yankee Stadium that much. But he does. So we got to take him for what he is. He's a B tier player. Down to the final three here, we got Elvis Andrews. And Elvis Andrews is also going to fall in the B tier. He's having a great season thus far with the Texas Rangers. In the past, he's had some good seasons, but he's really not a player that in my mind changes the game. And when you look at the A and S tier, those are players that change the scope of a game right now. Those guys in the lineup change how a team game plans, change how you, you just, they, they make a huge impact regardless of what they do. Elvis Andrews doesn't do that for me. Good player, good up the middle, B tier. Andrelton Simmons, A tier. He's so close to S for me, but I think he's going to be A tier, and here's my reasoning. Yes, his bat has vastly improved, 100%. He is absolutely disgusting in the field. Easily the best fielding shortstop out of the entire game of baseball. Might be one of the best fielders in the entire game. When you look at that S tier with Javi Baez and Francisco Lindor, like I said, They've got the power. They do it all. Andrelton Simmons is hitting for good average, don't get me wrong, and he hits a lot of doubles. He just doesn't have that home run power just yet. So I think, you know what, I'm probably going to move him. Let's, let's just throw him, let's throw him here. Because he is so close to being elite, in my opinion, as a complete player, because his glove really is just that good. That's the impact he makes, is in the field. And he's hitting pretty well, so A tier. And then the last and final player is going to be Trevor Story of the Colorado Rockies. I'm going to drop him in B tier. And the reason being is that we saw him have a fantastic season last year. Definitely had a breakout year. We saw his rookie year was fantastic, but then a couple off seasons here and there. Last year, he had another incredible season, MVP talks. He's not playing bad this year, don't get me wrong, but he's not that level that we once saw. Up the middle, he's pretty good. He's nothing crazy. He's not Angleton Simmons. And again, he's not booting every ball. I just haven't seen enough consistency out of him for enough period of time to call him an A tier player. And I know you're going to criticize me for putting Paul DeYoung there, but sometimes you got to go with your heart. Trevor Story is still damn good. He's just not A just yet. Not yet. So that's going to be my tier list video, ranking the starting shortstop. Of course, I want you guys to get involved. So let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree with me? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of disagreeing. Remember to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. That's the best way to support the channel. You guys have been amazing recently with the likes, the subs. Again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that sub button. I know I promised that I was going to have the best player from every state video out today. It's actually going to come out Saturday. I think that's going to work out better because your boy's going to be driving home tomorrow. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DraftNeck. Mark links in the description. And I think that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I had a lot of fun. I want to do more of these. So if you go ahead and make
make some more. Make sure to link me on Twitter or Instagram or anything. Send me ones that you make and they can appear in a video and I'll shout you out. Otherwise, that's going to wrap up today's video. YouTube recommends you watch this one right here as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your support like crazy. One of the last videos made in this room. It's been a good run, guys, but we're on to bigger and better things. See you next time. Bye.